I think, now. <laughs> Uh, this collection that I wanted to share is actually a part of my senior show, which I did a, a couple years ago. Um, in the process of, of coming up with this, it was actually inspired back when I was a college student in the 70s. And I've been thinking about this theme for many years now. Um, there's a word used in, at the end of the Psalms that you probably have read and wondered what that means. And the word is sila. Um, some theologians think it's a musical term. Others say it's stop and think about these things. And so that's the context that I wanted to use. This series is called sila, portraits of God. Think about these things. Now you may ask, do I think God looks like this? No, these are representational. They're not meant to be realistic. I don't think any artist has the skill to actually portray God as he should be portrayed. But it reminds me of a verse in Romans 1.20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen so that people are without excuse. I know that you can't see these as close up as you'd like from your social distance seat and so I put together a PowerPoint and a slide presentation that will give you a little bit of the biblical background, the theological implications, and my artist statement. Bo, would you start that for us, please? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And God said, Let the waters teem with living creatures, let birds fly above the earth and across the vault of the sky. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work he was doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all his work of creating what he had done.
So the question posed by the philosophy professor was if we can know an artist by a study of their artwork, what can we know about God by a study of his creation? When we study artwork, we can understand what colors an artist prefers. We can see if they pay close attention to detail or if they're loose, if they're abstract, if they're realist. So if we study the creation like we study art, what was God portraying when he created those six days? That's what inspired a lifetime of exploration and artistic expression. Next. On day one, this is entitled Day One, Light of the World. Um, I have portrayed the creator of light and I also wanted to use the medium that would be light. So this is burnished aluminum and it is burnished and scratched so that actually light is the source of the image. And you notice that the source of light is actually coming from his mouth because God spoke light into existence. I made each of these portraits 24 by 24 inch to represent the symmetry and the organization of God's skills, but also to represent the 24 hours of a day. So that we would not um, actually, next slide, let's look at some of the attributes of light that is shared with God. Light reveals, light attracts, light displaces darkness, light is the source of our sight, light brightens our mood. Of the visible light that we see, this broad spectrum, visible light represents only one or 0.3%, so three hundredths of all light is what we can see. Isn't that amazing? So that we would not lose the, f the fact that God was revealing himself through this act of creation on day one. Next slide, please. Many times in the New Testament, Jesus referred to himself as one of these elements of creation. Case in point, in John chapter eight, Verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Day two, next slide. In this portrait, God is portrayed as a three-in-one trinity. There are three sets of arms, three sets of hands, just as there are three forms of water. When it said God separated the water, we might erroneously think of just two layers, but if he separates the layer from above, the layer from below, there's a layer in between. There's water liquid, there's water vapor, and there's water solid, just like there are three forms of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This was painted on three layers of paper. You see a fibered paper, watercolor paper, and the third layer is acetate. And of course, the medium of choice would be watercolor. The attributes of God represented in water. Next slide. Water is presented in three forms, liquid, vapor, and solid. Water is essential for all life. It cleanses, purifies, refreshes. And our bodies are composed mainly of water. We drink water. Our bodies need water in order to survive. Jesus identified himself as the living water. Water reflects attributes of God, Selah. On day three, this work uses wood, bark, pieces of grapevine in order to portray Christ as the vine. God referred to himself as the vine in the New Testament. It is through Christ's death on the cross that he bore fruit. On day three, God prepared a place to dwell as well as giving us a source of food. He made a world of visual beauties, smells, and tastes. It's interesting to note that 
Christ also instituted the new covenant with the fruit of the vine at the Last Supper. When he gave that cup to his disciples, it was very similar to the Jewish tradition of betrothal. When the groom would offer his proposed bride a glass of wine, if she would take it, she was accepting his proposal. After they finished the wine, then she would wrap up that goblet, put it away while he went away to prepare a place for her. After some time had elapsed, he would return to claim his bride. The cup would be brought out at the end of the ceremony and broken, showing that the contract was fulfilled. Attributes of God from day three. God formed us from the dust of the earth. Plants provide food, shelter, and a delight for the senses. A vine needs support in order to grow and be fruitful. And the tree also reminds us of Jesus' sacrificial death. Jesus said, I am the vine. The vine represents attributes of God, Selah. Day four, the sun, moon, and the stars. The media I chose for this portrait is pastel chalks, which represent cosmic dust. There are four layers of black chiffon, and I have put colored tulle in between those layers with twinkle lights in order to represent the gaseous clouds of the cosmos and the brightness of the stars. Jesus identified himself as the bright morning star in the book of Revelation. The bright morning star is the last star to appear in the sky that heralds the coming of the sun. Next slide. The sun is essential for all life on Earth. The moon influences the oceanic tides. The stars are more numerous than we can fathom, and some stars are larger than we could comprehend. The constellations of the sky tell a cosmic story. I'm not referring to the signs of zodiac and astrology and the horoscopes and all this, but there's an interesting book written by Dr. James Kennedy called The Real Meaning of the Zodiac. And I've printed off a short synopsis here if anyone's interested at the end to um, check it out. I would highly recommend the book. And one of his interesting points of fact was the signs of the constellation are all nearly universal when you see the constellation of Virgo the Virgin. It's these stars, it doesn't look like a woman, but universally, it is recognized as Virgo the Virgin. And the Arabic tradition say that those signs came from Seth and Enoch, the child, the son, and the grandson of Adam. And I'd like to think that when Genesis talks about God coming and walking with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening, maybe he pointed up at the stars and said, that's Virgo the Virgin who will give birth to a son who will rule the world. Um, there are many beautiful thoughts that Dr. Kennedy shares in that book that I would highly recommend. Jesus said, I am the bright morning star in Revelation 22, 16. And that quote is, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you of these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The celestial bodies reflect attributes of God, Selah. Day five, this composition was my most challenging. This is actually the third edition. Um, the prior two just didn't quite um, communicate what I was wanting to about God. The theme of, I used extruded plastic in this, which is a product of the sea, and I burnished and etched it the way I did the first composition so that the image of God actually appears on the background. But when you're up here close, it's transparent. You see through it. This represents the dual nature of God. He has one hand gestured to the sky, the other one to the earth. Just like his creation that day, the birds occupy the sky, 
the fish, the depths of the earth. So this God-man occupies heaven and came down and occupied the earth. It's interesting to note that the dove is a unique bird in that it can nurture its young through a crop milk that they actually feed their, um, their young with. The birds and the fish are very nurturing and take care of their young. In the New Testament, at the time, oh, let's look at the attributes. Creatures that represent two realms, the sky and the deep. They are intelligent social beings, flocking birds, schooling fish, nurturing characteristics. They have great agility in movement and vocal expression. This morning I got up early, I was sitting out on the patio with my coffee and the morning star was out, the birds were singing their prelude to praise. It was just an amazing reminder of the beauty of God's creation. Next slide. The Holy Spirit descended on Christ at his baptism in the form of a heavenly dove. Therefore, his creation on day f five, <laughs> lost track, represents the attributes of God, Sila. And the last one, this one, the medium is clay because the Bible tells us that we were formed from the dust of the earth. When this was fashioned and waiting to be fired in the kiln, it was fractured. First, I was really concerned and I even tried to make another one. And that one also was fractured. So I'm thinking, okay, what is God trying to teach me in this? There is um, a tradition in Chinese art called Kent Suji that takes a broken vessel that has been favored and it, they repair it with gold. And I thought, what a beautiful metaphor for God's redemption. He takes what has been broken and damaged and makes it even more valuable than it was before. So I decided to go on and repair this piece and put it back together. And then I celebrated the brokenness by painting all of the fissures with gold. This also represents three of the names of Christ in the New Testament, Son of Man, Lion of the tribe of Judah, and Lamb of God. The attributes that God was revealing is his creation on day six represent both wild and domestic. They represent the closest companions to human. They are highly intelligent. There's an endless variety of forms, shapes, colors and patterns. He gave humans the ability to rule and care for his creation. And we are made in the image of God with an eternal living spirit. Lion of Judah, Lamb of God, Son of Man. Day six reflects the attributes of God. Selah, think on these things. Thank you for letting me share with you.